Hey everybody, welcome back. So let's talk about the state of the C3. Haven't really talked about this probably about three or four months. It's been uh, sitting uh, in the garage in the background and uh, just waiting for its uh, proper update. <laughs> we'll put it that way. So picture this, it's back in June, around June 6th, June 7th. Beautiful day out, I'm on my way to work and I'm on uh, 91 South and doing about 70, 75 and the, in the L48 and the Turbo 350, which is a three-speed transmission. So anybody that has a three-speed transmission, a Turbo 350, you know these things are really not really geared for the highway. But anyway, I've done this for like two and a half years and never had an issue with it. But you know, the engine is running about, I don't know, 28, 3000 RPM. Again, never had an issue with it. So get off the highway, come up to the uh, stop sign, car dies. And at that point, I knew something was terribly wrong. So I go ahead and restart it, and it does restart, not uh, not before putting up a flight first, but it does restart. So at this point, I limp it to work, and then we flat bed at home, right? So what I originally thought was a ignition issue, something wrong with the ignition module. Turned out that wasn't the issue, so I, I pulled the valve covers off, and this is what I found. Over on the passenger side, on cylinder number two on the exhaust side, the <clears throat> rocker arm was lying in the head and the spring retainer and the keeper was also lying in the head with a broken spring. So let's get down here. I'll show you, there's a broken spring, right? So we'll get back to the intake side in a minute, but Let's go over to the bench and I'll show you what had happened, right? So here is the exhaust side push rod. You can see it's severely bent to the point where it's gonna crack. And there's the intake. And you can also tell that that is also bent. So we have a stuck valve on the exhaust side on number two. We have bent push rods in both, right? And a broken exhaust spring. So I quickly uh, adjust the timing and I knew at that point, that's what the issue was, right? So while we go back about two and a half years when I initially bought this thing, the car ran like crap. And I did the normal tune up on it and plugs, rebuilt the carb and then I verified timing and small block 350 Chevy should be anywhere about between 12 and 16 degrees with initial timing. This thing was at zero, which would explain why it was running so bad. So I adjusted the timing and immediately fixed all the issues two and a half years ago. So I said, well, that's kind of odd, but it is what it is. So two years later, driving again. And what has happened is the timing is off again so i went ahead and adjusted it again just to get it running and it was off probably about another 12 degrees right so what has happened and so that's the the uh the result why don't we talk about the root cause so back in the 70s when gm came out with the small box chevy the l48 and the l82s and everything else what they decided to do was they decided to use a timing set in the front and they put a nylon coating on the uh, crank gear and also on the cam gear. So what happens is over the time, the nylon will actually separate from the uh, crank gear, which will in turn make the timing set smaller. And as a result, with it being smaller, now you have introduced more slack in the chain and so what happened was because now that the timing set has more slack in the chain it now allows it to jump time so when i was on the highway doing about 70 75 uh some more of the timing gear the coating on it must have failed it which caused it to jump time resulting in a bunch of bent valves push rods and everything else so as a result this engine is now blown up it needs to be replaced so what we're going to do is we're going to engine swap this C3. 
And I am not putting any money into this L48 because when this thing came out on its best day, I had a, about 180 horse because that was in the uh, the times of, of the smog era. And these cars, along with every in the everything in the 70s and 80s, was significantly detuned. Um, as a comparison, my Colorado, that has 300 horse. My wife's Jeep has 300 horse. And both of those cars will absolutely destroy this thing in a straight line. This thing is dog slow, right? So to get this thing up to something respectable, right? Around 300, 350 horse, um, it would take heads, timing set, lifters, rockers, um, intake, a decent carb. And this is a two bolt main and an intake, like if I didn't already say it. So if you start pricing everything else on this thing, just in parts alone, not counting any machine work as far as any damage that may have occurred, you're talking around three thirty-five hundred bucks, right? So the other option is to do a crate engine, right? So if you go look on whether it be Jags or Summit or or Summit or Blueprint, if you look at a three eighty-three or a three fifty-five. The short block or a long block, depending on what you go for, it can range anywhere from forty-five to sixty-five hundred bucks, right? So let's talk about the car. <laughs> it's a C3 Corvette, and as much as I hope the you know the the values have come up a little bit, but to go ahead and stick six or seven grand in an engine for a, for a car that's on its best day is worth ten, eleven grand, maybe it makes no sense. There's no return on investment. So we are still going to do an engine swap, but why don't we tell? Why don't we talk about what we're going to do? So we're actually going to do something that's been very popular in the last ten years. We are going to LS swap that Corvette, right? So I picked this thing up about a month ago. So this is a uh, 2002 drive-by cable uh, 5.3 LS, right? Came out of a truck. Uh, there's there was a million of these made and they are readily available and they're fairly inexpensive. So this engine has about 160,000 miles on it and I got it complete. So it's got all the coil packs, the exhaust manifolds, the, um, the O2 sensors. I have all the accessories. I have intake. We'll talk about that in a minute. I also got the PCM. I got the fuse block the starter, which is good. And then up on the wall, we got the harness, right? So what we're gonna do. So for all intents and purposes, right? This LS could theoretically fit in the Corvette the way it is using, using that intake, but I'm not gonna use that intake. We're gonna swap it out. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be swapping out that intake uh, with one from an LS six, and then we're going to be changing the water pump from an LS three, and then we're gonna be modifying the accessories to swing that alternator down and around, and then we're going to be doing a couple other things. We're going to be swapping out the oil pan, and then doing some mounts, and then we'll at that point we'll be able to physically get it installed in the car and go from there. So that is going to be the project on the C3. There's going to be a lot more video and content on this. I'm going to be creating a playlist on it to basically show you everything that I'm doing to it. And I'm going to put a cost as far as where I am on the build of this car, right? So right now we're in it for 600 bucks, right? For the engine as is, the PCM, the fuse box and everything else. And I think with me doing a lot of the work myself and looking for a lot of budget stuff on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and whatever, I think I can be right around 3,500 bucks all in with it in the car. And some may say, you know, why would you do that? Because again, this engine is fuel injected and from the factory in the Silverados, Depending on what year, the at the wheels, they are anywhere from 285 to 300 horsepower at the wheels. And that was going through a 4L60 with dual cats and everything else and all the parasitic draw or loss going through a truck, right? But 
on the engine dyno, if you look, these these five threes uh, were rated between 350 and 360 horse, right? So again, for me to get at that point by rebuilding that L48, not knowing where I'm going to be, I'm going to be easy in it for 35, uh, 4,000 bucks. Whereas if I can start at around three grand, 3,200 bucks, again, that is just a baseline of that 5.3. There are a ton of options to build this thing up for not that much money, just with a cam, right? And you, you can barely easily be at 400 horsepower pretty quickly with not a lot of money. So that's the plan. And uh, so again, stay tuned and uh, we'll go from there. If there's any thoughts, questions, concerns, go leave them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.